Hey, Jake McAfee here in Fort Wayne. Today we're out at one of the crown jewels of Fort Wayne local events. Uh, we're at the Johnny Appleseed Festival. As you can see, technically hasn't even started yet. And we got a ton of crowd streaming in. Everybody's super excited. It's already packed. So we're going to take you on a tour and show you what it's all about. All right, so as you can see behind me, there's a little stage area with some sitting. There's going to be music some live, uh, lots of dancing, all of it kind of uh, reminiscent of the 1800s era. So as you can see behind me, they have uh, fire cooking the food. Part of the vendor agreement is you're not allowed to have any modern amenities, no propane, nothing like that. So they make the food um, with flame. All right, so as we mentioned, they have uh, you know a lot of entertainment. There's a section with games, food, they also have crafts, as you can see behind me. All the different vendors have different crafts, again, reminiscent of the era. Everybody knows I'm a big battle axe guy and battle sword guy. So this festival is in honor of John Chapman. He's a folk hero, also known as Johnny Appleseed. Some believe that he was actually buried here. That's not confirmed. There's a lot of rumors about where he's buried but he spent his final days planting apple orchards across Indiana, which obviously had a profound effect on the area. Uh, he's also uh, the inspiration for Fort Wayne Tin Caps. That's uh, our minor league baseball team here that's been a huge success in downtown Fort Wayne. So that's based off Johnny Appleseed. So he's, he's tied to the history of Fort Wayne. So I'm here with Sheila. She's with the Settlers Group. Uh, we're going to ask her a couple questions about you know, her experience working here. So Sheila, what time did you get here this morning? We start setting up at 4.30 in the morning. Uh, for all of these big pots, we're making chicken corn chowder, ham and beans, and beef stew. And all of it is assembled here. We cook it over an open fire. And so it takes several hours for it to get done. They're doing it right. You can tell they're doing it right. <laughs> Sheila, it's good to meet you. Thank you for your yeah, time. And thank nice you for doing you. this. You, you're, it's a huge service to the city. So this event originally started in 1974 in a similar location, a little closer to Spy Run. Had a handful of vendors and they had a couple thousand people through, so it definitely was a success. Now there's over 200 vendors from 42 states and they get an estimated 300,000 visitors over the two days. So this is just a huge economic boom. It's unique, it's fun. Um, it's definitely a taste of something completely different. You don't see this anywhere else, so that's why it makes it so special. So as we mentioned, all the food is cooked with a fire, you know, open flame type of thing. So they have to keep a big stable of wood here. That way they can keep the fires going all day. Well, I mean, you can, I can see, I don't know, that's coffee or tea behind me, food. So all kinds of things going and it's all based on this supply of wood. So something cool that you may not think about. Becoming a vendor here is very difficult. There's many applicants every year that get to climb. They also have a very strict uh, set of requirements, again, with the way you cook your food, uh, the garb that you wear. You have to um, be able to either entertain with it, like show what it does, or kind of sell it loudly. Like we can hear people kind of, uh, I think carnival barking, is that the term? Cameron doesn't know the term. I got my brother behind the camera today. Uh, but anyways, the point being that um, you have to be able to again, maintain the integrity of the era that this was intended for. So another cool thing about being here is this area is very densely wooded, so it has lots of shade because it does get very hot this time of year every once in a while. We've got tables behind us, picnic tables over here, so you can kind of sit down, relax with your family, give your feet or the kids a break. One of the cool things about the park on the back side, there's a children's area, lots of games, uh, little mazes, and it's good for all ages. So games that you know small children can do. It's really great. I bring my family here. It's a good time. Okay, sometimes I just got to show them that I still got it. Okay. Oh.
So they have all kinds of different food here. One is the homemade pork rinds. Right now I've got the barbecue. Tried the original, it was delicious. It's a tough call. I'd say barbecue it is. Okay, so I just tried those delicious pork rinds. Now I'm here with Bobby. She's gonna tell us a little bit about how they make them. Hi, these are actually what we um, put into the oil. And as soon as we do the oil, they just kind of poof up into the pork rind that you see, makes them light and delicious and crispy. And come out and try them. If you buy some, then you Google it on, on Google and you can find all kinds of different recipes to use. Okay, awesome. Well, thank you. Thank Appreciate you. it, Bobby. So a quick note, because of the amount of people they have here, we do have a medical center and there's also a, a plumbed bathroom. So for those of you who are against porta potties, there is a plumbed bathroom. All right, well, we're wrapping up here at his alleged grave site. I hope you enjoyed the tour. There's lots of stuff going on. It was pretty cool. I ran into a bunch of friends out here. So that's the other thing is it kind of brings everyone together. And it's unlike any experience you're gonna have anywhere else. You can see why so many people come. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube, Jake in Fort Wayne, and be on the lookout for the next video.